Hi, and welcome to the first video in the investigation design series. This is going to be about the experimental investigation design in psychology. So this is a really, really key concept to understand within this topic, and you can see that it ticks off a few key ideas in an area of learning. But basically, you need to understand this topic inside and out. You need to be able to talk about this investigation design and its advantages and disadvantages as well. So with that in mind, um, let's have a look at the three that we'll be looking at in this series. So the experimental investigation design is what we're looking at today. Next, we'll look at quantitative observational, and then we'll take a look at qualitative investigation designs. So let's start with a definition. So experimental research is used to identify causal links between variables. So an example here is the effect that alcohol consumption might have on reaction time. So you can see we've got our two variables there and we're testing um, to see whether there's a causal effect between them. Right? Now researchers manipulate one variable, now this is known as the independent variable, and then they observe or measure the effect that it has on the dependent variable. Now if you're a little bit lost here, please see my video on these types of variables where I can explain them in more detail. Um, and it's important to note that in this situation or in this experimental design, all other variables are kept constant. So, the essential features of the experimental investigation design is number one, that there's a presence of a control group. So, we'll talk about this in a bit more detail in a minute, but just note that this is really, really important that nothing changes in this control group. There's also random allocation of participants to either the control group or the experimental group. Important note here that it is random. There is pre- and post-testing following the treatment that is given to that experimental group. So we need to test whether um, something's actually happened. So we do that by pre- and post-testing. Um, there is also hypothesis testing to see whether the treatment actually worked. So let's have a look at these in a bit more detail, uh, particularly the difference between experimental and control group. So an experimental group, in that group, um, the participants are exposed to the independent variable. Now this is also sometimes known as the experimental condition because this is the one that the researchers are really interested in. You know, if they vary the alcohol consumption levels, what difference is that going to have? Now that's in the experimental group. All right, now the control group on the other hand, these participants aren't exposed to that independent variable. They, um, everything is kept very constant for them and they're only exposed to the control condition. So this is really helpful to establish that baseline. So if you're trying to work out maybe at which level of alcohol consumption that your reaction time is impacted, we need to have some people who have no alcohol so we can see what just a normal baseline um, reaction time looks like. Okay, pre and post testing. So both groups are tested before and after the study um, and this is really to see if that treatment has made a difference. So if varying the levels of alcohol consumption has made a difference to reaction times. Okay, random allocation and assignment. So this is really important and it's also going to relate to the video on sample and population. Um, but basically when participants are selected for the experiment, they have to all have equal opportunity to be in one of those two groups we spoke about earlier, the experimental or the control group. Um, so they don't get to choose one or the other. Uh, the researcher doesn't get to choose, it has to be random. And if you have a sufficiently large number of participants, it's pretty reasonable to assume that you're going to have equal numbers of most participants. So if you randomly choose a, you know, a whole bunch of people from, from a population, you can be pretty sure that you're going to have a sample that I suppose represents that larger population. Now this really helps to control the effects of extraneous variables um, and you can see more information about this if you follow this link down the bottom. Now hypothesis testing. So you guys know from your years of studying science that a hypothesis is that educated prediction and it's stated as a specific and testable proposition about a phenomenon. Okay, so it's a statement, you're trying to guess what's going to happen if you vary um, one variable and the experimental research designs are testing this hypothesis to see whether the treatment had an effect. So if I was to hypothesize about our experiment, I would say that higher alcohol levels 
um, would lead to a decreased reaction time. And that would be my educated guess as to what I think is going to happen. Now, this is a bit of a flow chart for you just to try and visualise what we've spoken about. So you might like to pause it here and copy this down into your books. But we start up here with random assignment and you can see that our participants are assigned to either the experimental group or the control group over here. Okay, there is a pretest for both groups, but you can see here that in the experimental group, they're exposed to that independent variable or the experimental treatment, as we call it. Um, over here, you can see the control group is not, and then they are both tested. So this is our post-test. And then the researcher will look and see, okay, well, is there a difference in the results between these two groups? Um, and that's our study. All right. Now, the advantages of an experimental condition, um, of an experimental investigation design, rather, is quite a long list, all right? So we know that our independent variable can be controlled, and researchers really love control because it means there's, there's no guesswork involved. Um, it means the experimenter can try and eliminate extraneous variables, and it means that we can then say that any change is likely to be the result of the dependent variable and not something else that's happened on that day. Um, you have control over extraneous variables, and it's usually greater than in other methods. So that's why a lot of researchers love this investigation design. Now, this design involves manipulating the independent variable to observe the effect. So this means it's possible to est um, establish that cause and effect relationship, that alcohol consumption we know is going to cause um, decreased reaction time. Now, because of the strict conditions and control of this experiment type, um, the experimenter can repeat or replicate the experiment. And this is really, really important um, in terms of reliability and validity as well. Another advantage is that we can assess the responses by either qualitative or quantitative means. So you're not really restricted to using one type of method there. Now, disadvantages. Now, sometimes it's not possible to eliminate extraneous variables, and we'll talk about some examples of that in class. And it may not always be possible to relate to the real world. It's going to be very hard with some kind of studies to have something that really relates to the real world and how it would occur in real life. Now, a big one here is that it also may be unethical or impossible to randomly assign people to groups. So it would definitely be unethical to deliberately deprive children of sleep. In fact, that's actually a form of torture. Um, it's impossible purely because it would cost too much um, to observe jet lag by sending people on these extravagant world trips. Um, and it would also be unethical to experiment on forms of punishment on children. All right, this is going to be cruel. Right, so it's really important here that it's just it's not always possible to do so. So that was our first investigation design. Next time we'll have a look at the quantitative observational design. If you're looking for any more information, please see one of these resources or ask me plenty of questions. See you next time.